All right, man, peace. So if you've been following my channel long enough, you've heard me state that I do believe that LeBron James is going to be able to make the NBA Finals Championship round for the eighth straight season, which will set up quite a conundrum for the NBA because they do need to create a nice little bow to wrap around this LeBron James Cleveland Cavaliers narrative so that they can set up his moves to either the Houston Rockets or the LA Lakers after the season. And to be quite frank with you, the question does beg to be asked, is it worth it for LeBron or the NBA for him to get back to an eighth straight finals appearance when we all know that he is going to lose to either the Houston Rockets or the Golden State Warriors or whoever else comes out of the Western Conference? Most likely, I believe that he's going to get back because he's going to get assistance from the NBA referees. But are the Cleveland Cavaliers the best team in the Eastern Conference? No, they are not. And would it shock me if they were to lose in any round in the Eastern Conference? No, it would not. But I do give LeBron James the credit that he deserves for excelling on the basketball court for the last 10 seasons. That's why I give him a chance to get to the NBA Finals round. But it would not shock me to see him lose to any team in the Eastern Conference, whether it be the first, second, or third round. And if they do get to play the Philadelphia 76ers, for example, I think that that's a terrible matchup for them. But let's see what happens. They're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Speaking of which, LeBron James has been to seven straight NBA Finals, but the way things stand right now in the East this year could be his toughest attempt to keep the streak alive. The Cavs are currently fourth in the Eastern Conference and only have nine to four odds to get back to the Finals. That, according to Westgate Las Vegas Superbook. So nine to four odds is really not that bad when you look at how their team has performed. That shows you that, that Westgate Superbook's out there in Vegas also is factoring in the LeBron James factor. Stephen A, tell me this, my friend. Why don't you want to see LeBron in this year's finals? Well, let me answer that first. I don't want to see LeBron in this year's finals because it's not going to be competitive. I would love to see a fully healthy Boston Celtics team or even a Toronto Raptors team that has finally been able to prove itself should they be able to prove themselves in the postseason against whoever comes out of the West rather than LeBron James who, once again, he suffers from the curse of the gifted. He is such a savant on the basketball court that he believes that the LeBron James system is, the, is always the best way to play. He does not really make adjustments, and when he goes against a team that utilizes all their team equally, like Golden State or Houston, he's going to lose, and they're going to get blown off the floor. I would love to see Boston against Golden State in the finals or Boston against the Rockets. I think that Brad Stevens with a fully healthy Boston team could take it to seven games. Because LeBron James is the greatest player in the world. Um, he, by sliver. By sliver. He is somebody uh, that never cheats us, that always, brings his, that, that always brings what he has. Well, that depends on what you define as cheating. If you mean giving effort on the basketball court, then yes, you can make that case. But if you're talking about using performance-enhancing drugs, well... <laughs> That's a whole other topic. Allegedly using performance and hassing drugs. And I'm of the mindset, I just don't want to see six finals losses on his resume. Mm. I just don't want that to happen. Um, I don't want him getting to another final <coughs> and being able to say, well, what else being able to say? He's going to eight straight NBA finals. You well, you guys have been saying that for the past seven years, so why would eight matter? Why would it matter? LeBron James is the modern day Wilt Chamberlain slash Jerry West. You guys give him brownie points and you give him extra credit just for getting there. He gets participation trophies. That's what you guys give him because you're trying to figure out a way to make him commensurate with Michael Jordan and it's never going to happen. You know, well, damn it, you would have lost six in your career, okay? Three of the last four. I just don't want to see that. I understand what's going on here, but here's what everybody needs to remember. This is perhaps the easiest loss LeBron James would be able to stomach of his career if he avoided two scenarios. Well, if you let him tell it, he doesn't accept losing. So I don't know how he would be able to accept this loss, even though he seemed to take the loss last year against Golden State in stride. As he stated that he averaged a triple-double and he basically did what he needed to do on his end. LeBron is an emotional dude who makes emotional statements. One of the worst decisions that he's made in the last five years was coming out and stating that he was chasing the ghost in Chicago. Very poor move on his part. A, don't lose in the first round. And B, don't lose to Kyrie Irving. 
If you don't lose in the first round, if you don't lose to Kyrie Irving, any other loss that happened at the hands of the, uh, at, you know, with these Cleveland Cavaliers would be easy to stomach. So basically, Stephen A. Smith, you want him to win in the first round and then lose in the second round against Toronto. And that would be a perfect out for you. I don't understand why you're trying to design the perfect out for LeBron James. His job is to be a competitive athlete. However he loses is how he loses. And according to you guys, LeBron James is uh, better than Michael Jordan. So he should be able to get out of the Eastern Conference with the squad that he has. Because he is by far the best player in the Eastern Conference. So even though there may be other teams that may be better from top to bottom, he should be able to transcend because all I've been told for the last 10 years is that LeBron James is a combination of Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan. He makes everybody better. Everybody loves playing with him. Other, superstar, other superstars in the NBA want to come play with him. So he should be able to make Jordan Clarkson play at the level of Steph Curry and Rodney Hood be at the level of Kevin Durant. That is according to the narrative that has constantly been spun about LeBron for the last 10 years, that he's able that he's able to do those things. So he needs to get it done. Look, in all reality, do I believe that the Cleveland Cavaliers are the best team in the Eastern Conference? Of course not. Once again, it wouldn't shock me to see them lose in the first round, especially if they were to play the Philadelphia 76ers. But I give LeBron the credit that he deserves for what he's accomplished to put him in an advantageous position to get back to the finals. If for no other reason, the fact that the other teams in the Eastern Conference either lack the talent or they lack the wherewithal, the overall experience that's needed to defeat LeBron James in the third round of the playoffs when the chips are down and the refs are on his side. We'll see. I've already stated that the NBA may be considering cashing out on LeBron James. They're certainly ready to wrap up the LeBron James in Cleveland narrative. He already did what he stated he was going to do. He got them the championship ring that they were so lustful for over the past 50 plus years. So he's going, he's going to cash out himself and go somewhere else. So it will be interesting to see how the referees call many of these playoff series that LeBron James is in, particularly in the Eastern Conference. Because of all the change that has taken place and all the distractions. If Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance Jr. and Rodney Hood and, and George Hill don't work out, if, if Kevin Love, mental and physical issues, and we wish him nothing but the best because he's a great guy, if he can't come back and be what he needs to be, if you're LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers, you had the perfect excuse. You had the perfect excuse to go home early and not have us watch you lose another NBA Finals. I already stated that. I stated that when Cleveland made those big trades, that would also provide LeBron James with the excuses that he needs in case he goes out in a, you know, in a certain round in the playoffs ignominiously or if he gets back to the finals and gets, gets his doors blown off again as usual. I don't wish that for him. I would rather him lose earlier, go home, take his, you know, get some rest, and decide where the hell he's going to be next year and beyond. And, 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 and start planning for another couple of championship runs that way. I don't want to see him lose and have six NBA Finals losses on his resume. I do not wish that for him because I think that's what a lot of people will focus on instead of the greatness he has blessed us with for so many years. I just don't wish that for him. Well, he's already stopped people from concentrating on the greatness that he's blessed the NBA viewers with over the last 15 plus years by constantly harping on the fact that he wants to overcome the quote unquote ghost in Chicago. So he's helped feed that fire and fan those flames. So that's what he that's what he himself must deal with. Well, I don't think you're going to have to worry about it because I don't think they're getting to the finals, Stephen A. Smith. Well, they shouldn't unless he has a transcendent playoff performance, which is highly possible. This team is much closer that he's playing on right now to the Cleveland team he dragged kicking and screaming to the finals in 07. I agree, and I stated that. And I believe that that was a little bit of nostalgia on LeBron James's part to have a team of young players that uh, are, are ready to follow him slavishly into battle. Sometimes people are apart from something or someone for so long that they forget what it was actually like to be associated with that person or with that sentiment with that environment and now he's starting to understand that okay it is a little strange having to carry a bunch of bums <laughs> then then 
it is to the teams of recent vintage that LeBron James has been on, the past seven in a row, where he's gotten to the finals, I don't care how weak the Eastern Conferences seem to be, you go to seven straight finals, just the wear and tear physically, emotionally, psychologically. Well, that's why he has the HGH, allegedly. <laughs> There's no way anyone in the modern game should be able to do that, particularly at his age. He is amazing, and he will go down as the second greatest player of all time behind Michael Jordan. Well, that's your opinion. The second greatest player of all time is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or Bill, or Bill Russell. All right, so they're two and three. Then you have Magic, then you have Bird. After that, you have LeBron. And that's only because Jordan's peak was a little higher than his. Um, he's just amazing. But I don't think he can drag this team to the finals, Stephen A. Smith. You think about what they actually traded Kyrie Irving for. They traded Kyrie Irving for Jordan Clarkson, Larry Nance Jr., and Rodney Hood. Someone should have told Magic that they could have made that deal. He would have traded for Rodney Hood and traded the three of them for Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving would be in purple and gold right now. I mean, think about that. They broke a dollar into four quarters or a 50-cent piece if you see Isaiah that way, but he had the bad hip. And now this is what they're left with. I don't want to see him go to the finals anyway. As I said, I don't think he can get there. But I agree. I don't want to see him in the finals either, but I do think he can get there. But I don't want to see his doors get blown off again. It's going to be boring, not because of any sense of compassion for his legacy. I really could care less about LeBron's legacy. I think that his legacy is already etched in stone, and he can't change that, other than for many of his delusional fanboys. Um, but uh, no, I don't want to see him in the finals. I want to see Boston in the finals fully healthy. But you know why? Our analytics team, Stephen A., tells me that he has a 0.5% chance to win the finals this year. 0.5, that's one. That's high, because <laughs> that motherfucker got a 0% chance. That's one out of 200. If they played 200 finals, you think maybe he'd win one. You know, he's not going to win. He has no shot to be either Golden State. Max Kellerman sound like Adrian in Rocky IV. You'll see them at suicide. You can't win. <laughs> or Houston, which are the only two teams, barring catastrophic injury, that are going to come out of the West. It's one or the other. He has virtually no chance to beat either one. But to tell you the truth, the more I look at it, I don't know how good a chance he has to get out of the East, period. Agreed. Period. He's going to have to get through Boston and Toronto. I don't know if he can get by with this cast. Boston or Toronto. Shit, can he get past Philly? I want to see them against Philadelphia because when they when they face teams with great big men, they've struggled badly. Even though Denver lost that game that they played against them about a week or so ago, Jokic was out there looking like damn Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Even if Kevin Love comes back and looks good, maybe he can get by Boston if they're without Marcus Smart. Obviously, they're not going to have Gordon Hayward. But Toronto? Good luck with that. I don't see it, Stephen A. I think they could get out of the East, and that's what I'm worried. Cause I Only if LeBron has a transcendent performance. Because I don't want... Throughout the playoffs. I don't want them to get out of the East. I'd rather see Toronto or Boston. I, I mean, it would, listen, Philly ain't got no chance. They're too young yeah, right too now young. or what have you. Philly doesn't have a chance to get to the finals, but they have a chance to beat Cleveland, Stephen A. Smith. If they were to play them, they have a chance to beat them. You, the Wizards, they don't have the personnel depth-wise to do, pull it off. We get it. Milwaukee can't hit perimeter shots with any degree of consistency. We get our Indiana's just got one player in Oladipo. Miles Turner's played well the other night against Embiid and stuff. But bottom line is they don't have the personnel. Nate McMillan, by the way, is my coach of the year. I think he's been absolutely sensational, and he deserves He's right there, but I would give it to Brad Stevens. Deserves a lot of credit. But in the end, what it comes down to is this. LeBron James, I don't see one team in the East that I believe I can look at and say, you can beat LeBron a best four out of seven. I did not say Cleveland. I said LeBron. I agree. I agree. That That is always the conundrum whenever you're talking about LeBron James in the Eastern Conference. Do any of these teams have what it takes to overcome him and the referees in a playoff series? And my problem with that's why this subject is something we're talking about. Because I actually don't want... LeBron to win the East because I don't want to see him lose when I think another this NBA finals. Unless, unless, Max, unless, Max, we are of the mindset he'd lose to Golden State, but he could beat Houston. Because then... Absolutely not. And I you're saying, okay, that. what do you wish for more? LeBron James to lose before the finals? Or for LeBron James to make it to the finals, but Houston to beat Golden State 
because LeBron could beat Houston. I mean, which one well, are you the wishing The most for? interesting matchup is probably Boston and Houston in the finals. That would give you new characters and interesting. I agree with that. That probably would be the best matchup in the finals, Boston and Houston. They, they play two dynamite regular season games. But Boston and Golden State also play two dynamite regular season games. Interesting stars. I, would love that. I have a I have a feeling it may be Houston and Toronto. But the point is I wanna I wanna get to your narrative if you don't want to see LeBron lose six finals. And I understand it's coming from a good place, but I believe that your narrative is caught up in like a previous era's basketball values. Stephen A, you're about six years older than I am. But we came up more or less in the same era of the way you thought about basketball. And back then, if the best player in the world had a crew, no excuses. Go win the finals. Didn't mean he always did. Moses Malone didn't always win. Larry Bird didn't always win. Magic Johnson didn't always win. But off, they were always in the mix, and they frequently won. And then, and you know, since Max Kellerman brings up Moses Malone, it's very important once again for me to mention to many of the Kobe fans who get upset when I don't have him in the top ten. I have Kobe in that grouping with Moses Malone, Dr. J, Isaiah Thomas, Oscar Robertson, those level of players, which is a phenomenal compliment to Kobe Bryant. But he's certainly not top 10. Moses Malone at one point was considered the best player in the NBA in the early 80s. A lot of people don't understand that. And then Jordan changed everything. It's like, well, now you got to win all the time. Absolutely. That is why I have him as my number one, because of how he changed the paradigm. Michael Jordan changed the paradigm for how NBA stars and champions were perceived. I don't see it like that anymore. I don't think people are going to see that this that way in this generation or the next because the game has changed it is much less physical it's much more european kind of opened up it's much more dependent on team than it used to be one singular superstar agreed the era of hero ball is dead it's over it's over and due to the fact that your four man and your five man are asked to be able to hit three pointers now or at least hit long range jump shots that has opened up the lane that is why that's one of the main reasons why the NBA is less physical. They talk about the rule changes, but it's also due to the fact that your four men and your five men are asked to be able to do more than they were back in the 90s when they basically just hung out in the paint and waited for people to drive so that they could hit them. No way. So when you say like KD, get it done. Well, who else is around? If you're in with a juggernaut super team, you're not going to be able to get it done. Well, hey, I'm not LeBron, I don't want to see you lose. Everyone's going to know he has no shot against Houston or Golden that's State. False, that's falsifying my narrative. I didn't say KD get it done without them in terms of a championship. Early, I said KD get it done for the rest Re of the regular, regular season. season. Right. Or that's all the regular no, season. No, no, I understand. But Houston no. also is playing the regular season. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But I'm just assuming they'll lose another game or two before the season's over. And they're going to oh, and oh, um, uh, go. Right, but is KD that much better than James Harden? Much less James Harden combined with Chris Paul. It's just it's just ridiculous. It's another attempt by Stephen A. Smith to create these false expectations for Kevin Durant so that he has a reason to lambaste him on national television. Uh, Golden State is only like a game back from them. So that's the only way I'm looking at it. All I'm saying is I was talking about Kevin Durant regular season. As it pertains to LeBron, I'm just looking at it from the standpoint, look, you got enough of a crew to get to the finals. I'm just hoping he does it because I don't care what anybody says. You will remember that he lost six It kills him for the engine. Well, we're going to remember that anyway. Uh, there's nothing that he can do to erase his performance against the Dallas Mavericks. Sorry. Period. Biggest flame out of any superstar athlete, arguably in sports history, was his performance in 2011. MJ conversation. I think you know that's what he yes. cares about. Listen. I know history might be kind to him down the road when we're looking back at it, but for what he's chasing, that ghost, the goat. I get it, and I've made that argument. All the only goat LeBron is chasing is the Baphomet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>